In part one, you learned how to take snapshots of your project with commits so that you never lose your work. But what if you want to test out some new ideas, perhaps experiment with some code, and you don't want to risk destabilizing your main project and perhaps breaking it? Well, that's where branches come in. By the end of this video, you're going to learn how to use a workflow where you can test out new ideas, try to build new features on branches so that you don't risk your main project. And then once you get it working there, to merge those features back into the main code base. This is the safest way to build your app. And this is how the professionals do it. But don't worry, I'm going to make it so easy and simple for you to understand so that you can use this workflow, whether you're a beginner or if you don't have a technical background even. All right, let's dive in. So take a look at this diagram. We're going to do a quick recap. The repo is like your project vault for a single project. A commit is a snapshot of your project. A push is uploading the latest project from your local repo on your computer to the online repo on GitHub. Now let's add your next superpower, branches. First of all, what is a branch? So far, you've visualized your repo as the main project with a series of snapshots documenting the different states of your project. This is actually a branch already. It's called the main branch. Now let's say you want to experiment with a new feature, but you don't want to do it on the main branch. What you can do is create a copy of your project and experiment on that instead. And that is a different branch. You can name that branch whatever you want. Typically, you name it according to the feature that you're trying to build or what you're trying to test. So let's call this branch feature A. Now, when you create a copy of your project to start this feature A branch, you can copy your project from any point. You can take the latest version of your project and make a copy of that. Or maybe you can create a copy of one of the snapshots, whatever makes the most sense. Now, after you create this new branch, you're going to switch your workspace to work off of this feature A branch. And you're going to be writing your code, experimenting, doing whatever, and the main branch remains untouched. Now, on this feature A branch, you can also do snapshots, otherwise known as commits. And it's almost like that is a separate repo, but it's not. It's all within the same repo. I'm just saying it works the same way. So once you get your feature working exactly like you wanted to in the feature A branch, it's time to move that code back into the main branch. And this process is called merging the branch. After you merge the feature A branch into the main branch, you can go ahead and delete the feature A branch or you can keep it around in case you need it in the future. And the last thing is you're not limited to just one branch. You can create as many branches as you want. All right, the best way to understand it is actually to try it out. So let's jump right in. Okay, so what have we got here? In part one, we created this repository called test-repo. And inside, we put this Xcode project. So I'm going to continue off of that. If you need to know how to set up your first repo, how to make your first few commits like we did in part one, go watch part one. So this is where we're continuing off of. Take a look at this. The current branch is main. This is a branch. By default, you get the main branch. But let's say we get to this point where I want to build a new feature and I don't want to do it on the main branch because maybe I've never done it before. Maybe I just feel safer working on a separate copy of the project first, whatever may be the case. Let me show you how to create a new branch. So here, you just click current branch and you can create a new branch like that. Or remember I said that when you create a new branch, you're creating a copy of your project and you can create that copy from the latest version of your project. Or you can go in your history, take a look at the previous commits and you decide I want to create a copy from there. You can always right click and choose create branch from this commit or snapshot. So I'm going to do it off of the latest state of my project. And I'm just going to hit new branch right here. You're going to give it a name. In the example earlier, we called it feature A. So this is typical naming of branches. You use dashes like this and just all lowercase. So let's go ahead and hit create branch. Take a look at this. Now my current branch is feature A. So what this means is that it's created a copy of our project, put it into feature A branch, and we are currently working on that copy of the project. We are no longer touching the main branch. You can switch back if you want to do that. All you have to do is click this. And now you're working off of the main branch. Okay, so 
This is how you switch branches, but let's make a change. So if we go to our code base right here, you can even see up here, we're working off of feature dash A. This is really smart of Xcode to detect that. Let's make a change. We are going to get rid of this text field and we're just going to replace it with a button. So let's do, say, tap me and I'm just going to print out hello. That's all we're going to do. So when that is tapped, it is going to just uh, print out this in the console down here. And I'm happy with that. Take a look, it's detected that change here in my feature A branch. And I'm going to take a snapshot or make a commit of this. Place text field with the button. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And here it says publish branch because we're still working on our local repo. We haven't pushed this branch to our online repo yet. So if we go to our online repo right here, this is our test repo on github.com. And then you take a look at branch right here. See, there's a, a drop down here, main. You don't see the feature A branch. If you want to create an online backup or perhaps you're working with different people, you can publish the branch and then it is already detects it here. You can now see the branch right here. Okay, but that is optional for you at this point. What I do want to show you is this. So I'm working on feature A, right? And we just made this button and we just made a commit. If I switch branches back to main, now we're wor working on our main branch. This is like the good copy of our project. You can see that the code has changed right here. You can see we're working off of main. It doesn't have my button changes because that was on a separate branch. So this is why working off of branches is really good because you preserve the uh, integrity of your working code. And on the branch, you build the features, you test it thoroughly, you make sure it's good. And then the next part is we're going to merge those changes in feature A branch into the main branch. And then we can delete the feature A branch if we don't want it. So here's how you do a merge. So first go back to your GitHub desktop, take a look at which branch you're currently at. Make sure that all your changes are committed. So you don't have any changes here and you are going to navigate and then you're going to switch branches to the one that you want to merge into. A good way to think about this, if you forget, is just look at it, this button down here. It says, choose a branch to merge into feature A. That's not what you want. You want to choose a branch to merge into the main branch, right? You want to merge feature A into main. So this button is wrong. So reading the text on this button, you'll understand that that's not what I want and that will prompt you to switch to the main branch. And then if you look at the button now, it says choose a branch to merge into main. Aha, uh -huh, that is what we want. So go ahead and click that. And what we want to do is choose the feature A branch to merge into the main branch. But before you do that, let me just hit X. Before you do that, when you're looking at the main branch, just also make sure that you don't have any changes because it minimizes the chance of there being a conflict. The conflict is where you can't automatically merge the changes from the feature A branch into the main branch because there is some conflict of code and GitHub will need your manual intervention to help it resolve that conflict. You got to make a choice about how to combine it. Otherwise, most of the time, it's going to be automatic and, and you're not going to have any problems. So we'll talk about conflicts in just a second. So let's go back to clicking this button, merge a branch into main. So we just finished adding the button on feature A and we're happy with it. We want to put that code back into main. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to choose the feature A branch. This will merge one commit from feature A branch into the main branch. So we're going to hit this button and we are now on our main branch. And if you take a look at the code here in the upper left corner, you'll also see that we're on the main branch and it has our button change, right? So then what's left to do is to push the latest state of the project up 
to GitHub. And so now if I hit refresh, you'll see that our main branch does have the, the new feature that we've done. Now I want to show you what happens in the event that we can't automatically merge branch A into main because of a conflict. So let me artificially create a conflict and we can walk through that. Okay, so let us switch back to feature A branch. So right now, the main branch and feature A branch, they're exactly the same, right? So we have this button in feature A and in main. I'm going to make a change on this branch first, feature A. I'm going to change this to yo. Okay, and then I'm going to go, this is feature A, right? I'm going to go commit this snapshot change hello to yo on the button. Okay, now I'm going to switch to the main branch and I am going to change the text from hello to hi. I'm going to save that. And now on the main branch, it's de uh, detecting that change as well. So I'm going to say update hello to hi on button. I just made a commit on that. So you can see why there would be a conflict, right? Source control is going to realize that I changed the same line of code on both branches. And now when I try to merge the feature A branch into main, it's going to detect that there is one conflicted file. So let's see what happens. It won't let me combine it because it can't do it automatically. It's going to ask me, let's resolve this conflict first before we do this. Okay, so it's going to allow you to open it in a text editor. I'm using Sublime Text, so that's what it's going to open the file in. And you'll see what that looks like in a second. But I want to show you two other options. You can tell it to, hey, let's just use the file from the main branch or Hey, let's just use the file from feature A branch, but I wouldn't recommend just choosing a side like that. I would actually recommend opening it up in your text editor and manually taking a look at what's conflicting and resolving it like that, because there may be other changes in that file and you don't want to blindly just take one whole file over another, or you can just abort the merge here. So what we're going to do is open it up. You can see right here that line 17 to 21, this is where the conflict is. And this line here is separating the two versions. So on the main branch, I have this. And on the feature A branch, I have this. Now, in order to resolve this conflict, all I have to do is choose one or the other. Or maybe I won't choose any. I can change it to whatever I want at this point. So I can first delete that. I can delete the separator and I can delete this and then I can, I can do anything I want. I can keep both. This is, this would be me keeping both. Let's just save the file right now. Or maybe I can choose one. I can choose the other. I can change it to a combination of the two, whatever you want. So maybe I'll just keep both just for the sake of the demonstration. And I've saved it I'm gonna hit X. And so now it detects there are no conflicts. Well, it detects that you've tackled it. It's not going to decide whether what you did is right or wrong. It's just going to know that, hey, you've addressed it. So let's continue with the merge. And then we're on the main branch now. And if we go back to the code, you'll see that it reflects the way that I've chosen to merge that conflict. Okay, so that's how you resolve merge conflicts. But as long as you don't touch both branches simultaneously and then try to merge them, you should be relatively conflict free. Because the way that I see you using this workflow is probably creating a branch to build a new feature or to experiment with something. And then if it doesn't work out, you can just delete the branch altogether and your main project is, is clean, it's untouched. Or maybe you did that experimentation in that branch and it worked out and you finished that feature, then you just merge it back to your main project. Right. So this is something where just do it a couple of times, 
and you're gonna get the hang of it. So to recap, branches let you experiment with new code safely. It keeps your main project stable and clean. And then you only merge the good stuff from your branch back into your main project. This is how professional developers work and even big software development teams. Dozens of people working on different branches and then only merging their work when it's finally ready to go. However, even if you're just a solo developer like me, using branches help keep your main project clean and zero risk of breaking your project and having to start all over. So what we covered today in this video, including part one, I think that's all I'm going to cover regarding source control in GitHub because that's about 90% of the use case that you and I and viewers of this channel are going to need. If you have additional topic ideas or questions, just drop a comment below. I personally read and answer every single comment myself. And if you want to start building your own app, check out my beginner's playlist right over here. Or if you prefer doing AI coding, check out this video down here. All right. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this GitHub series useful and I'll see you in one of these videos.